darling, what are you doing here? What on earth is going on around here? What's happening, Jim Leon? Now, Mary Bell, Anne, don't be frightened. George's father and Sooty have disappeared. Disappeared? How? Sooty was helping me get Timmy out of the secret passage. The study's locked, so we had to try this end. Sooty crept in, and I waited outside. After a while, I came in and found the room was empty. Didn't you hear anything? I thought I heard Sooty call out Mr. Barling's name. Mr. Barling? But he couldn't have been here. I want Sooty. Where is he? Don't worry. He's with Uncle Quentin. They must be somewhere in the secret passage. There's nowhere else they could be. <gasps> The handle that opens the secret door. It's gone. You won't be able to open the secret panel now. Block must have taken it. Block? What's he got to do with it? Just after I came in and found the room empty, I heard somebody coming, so I hid under the bed. I couldn't see who he was or what he was doing, but I heard a funny clicking noise. If you couldn't see, then how do you know it was Block? Just before he went out, he coughed and it sounded exactly like Block. Now I vote we all go back to bed. Sooty Uncle Quentin may have turned up again by the morning. And if not, we may have to face your stepfather. Now off you go. Lock your door and leave your light on. Yeah. Mm. I think it's most unlikely that our esteemed professor will have anything to say for himself before morning. You can't do this, Mr. Barling. You must be mad. Really, it's okay. Little boys who meddle in things which don't concern them must learn to accept the consequences. No doubt your father will think twice before he works against me in the future. Block will fetch you something to eat in the morning. So it was Block. I knew it. Block is in my employ, if that's what you mean. Oh, uh, when he wakes up, tell him I'll be back to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And don't try to escape. You'll never find your way out of these tunnels alone. Professor Kirin! Professor Kirin! Wake up! Uncle Quentin! Oh, please try and wake up! Try our room. Oh, and leave the tray. Thanks, Sarah. What now? I don't know. But Uncle Quentin and Sooty haven't turned up. That's for certain. Professor Kirin, are you in there? No, he isn't. Neither's Uncle Quentin. Oh, we'll have to tell Mr. Lenoir about Timmy, too. No. But the poor dog's been locked up in the secret passage all night. Julian's right. Father really hates dogs. He'd be terribly angry. Going to be bad enough when he finds out about Uncle Quentin. And Sooty. Should be interesting. Mr. Lenoir wishes to see you all in the study, immediately. Sarah tells us that Professor Kirin is nowhere to be found, and that you two boys were in his room. Now, will you kindly tell me what is going on? Sooty's gone. Sooty's gone as well. Maribel. Maribel, what do you mean? 
They disappeared, both of them, last night. Well, I, I've had enough of this play acting in my house. I, I demand that you tell me everything. Not in front of Block. But Block is completely deaf. He may be deaf, but he can lip read. Very well, Julian. Perhaps you'd prefer to explain to the police. Oh, I thought they'd be the last people you want to see, Mr. Lenoir. Go to your rooms at once. Go on. I'll get to the bottom of this matter with or without your help. Can't you give up? No. Can't just sit around all day doing nothing, waiting. Funny there's been no sign of the police. It's not Father's fault the inspector's gone to the mainland. What's that? A screw. Now, where did that come from? One missing from here. Look! Well, how on earth did it come out? That's it! That clicking noise you heard last night. A screwdriver. A ratchet screwdriver. Lot must have been working here when he talked to it. So you think this is another secret entrance? Sooty said the house is riddled with them. One way to find out. Maribel, do you think you could get a screwdriver? And watch out for your stepfather. So, you're in here. Have the police arrived yet? And I told you to remain in your own rooms. Now, I've managed to have a long talk with Block. And as I thought, he knows nothing about the goings on up here. Or the signalling from the tower, if indeed there ever was in him. But Sooty was I sure! Know, Julian, my only regret is that Sooty has persuaded the rest of you into believing his stupid tales. And join in persecuting Block. The poor fellow is very distressed. So I've instructed him to retire to bed and rest. Now, this whole matter is very upsetting. So until it's cleared up, all of you will remain up here, please. Right, Maribel. Get a screwdriver. A big one. Where are you going? I'm just going to check something. All right. Now maybe you'll believe father. That's it. All done. This must be the way how Mr. Barling came into the room. Getting lost. Then let's go back. Shh. Listen. Someone's coming. Shh. Let's follow. We have to keep well back. We could lose them. Get lost ourselves. But Father said Block was in bed. You saw him. She was asleep in bed the night we followed the signalers in the tower. Sooty was sure it was Block. 
But your father showed us that he was in his room. Then let's follow now. They might lead us to where Father and Sooty are. I'm sorry, Maribel. I think your father's mixed up in this somehow. We've got something very important we've got to do. Come on. No, thank you. Please yourself. So you can hear. You hold your tongue. You only pretended to be deaf so you could listen in to all stepfather's business. And he trusted you. Why? That's you... enough, Sooty. You lay tough lock. I wish to speak to Professor Kirin. I can't see what you're trying to gain with this ridiculous conduct. I'm sorry you'll find my conduct ridiculous, but at least you'll admit it's effective. Effective? How? In preventing you from giving support to Lenoir in his wretched marsh draining scheme. You look amazed. Let me amaze you further. I have a most generous offer to make you regarding the marshes. You? Yes, you see, the marshes play a very important role in my business. As does Block here. So it was Block signaling. I knew it. And Smuggler's top too. You're a smuggler, and Block uses our house to signal to you. Very clever, Sooty. But little boy should be seen, not heard. Another word out of you, and I'll let Block throw you into the marshes. All this has nothing to do with me. I'm only interested in Mr. Lenoir's scheme to drain the marshes, not smuggling. Precisely. But supposing Block wakes up? We've just seen Block. But there could be two. Somebody who looked just like him. Now let's see what Mr. Lenoir has to say about this. Why on earth didn't you tell me about this before? Because we thought you were mixed up in this somehow. Smuggling? Me? Well, Sooty kept trying to tell you about the lights he saw on the marshes. The signalling and everything. And we didn't believe him. I can see now how I must have looked. Barling's obviously mad. We must find Sooty and George's father before something dreadful happens. Timmy could help. Timmy? The Dickens is Timmy. That's something else we've got to tell you about. Simply sign the marsh cleaning plans over to me and you will be rich. Richer than you ever dreamed. I don't deal with rogues. Good for you, Professor. Another speak out of you, Sooty, and I will have Block throw you into the marshes. If those marshes are drained, my ships will no longer be able to creep in unseen. All those precious cargoes. And more important, all that excitement, which is more than life itself to me, all that will be gone too. Those marshes will not be drained. I will buy those plans, not Mr. Lenoir. You're insane. You cannot fight me. Perhaps a few days in the dark with no food might make you more reasonable. Timmy! Good old Timmy! Good old Timmy. That's a good dog. He must have come out of the secret passage somehow. What secret passage? George was forbidden to bring him here. Yeah. Who cares? Timmy's our only chance of finding our way through the tunnels. Then let's go. Come on. That's the whole story, and why we didn't want you to know. You behave very foolishly. I can't help it if I don't like dogs. I detest them. I can't bear them in the house. Maribel knows that. But I'd have made arrangements to have him boarded out. And then? Hmm? I'm sorry. I should have told you. Yes, you should. Now I suggest you go and find him. Thank you very much. And when you do, keep him out of my sight. Yes, of course. Can I go too, Mummy? No, dear. I think you're Please? Yes, put me through to the inspector's office, will you? This is how Timmy got out of the passage, all right. Uh, Knowing Timmy, they found himself some water. So I don't worry, George. I think Mr. Lenoir really does hate dogs. At least we now know that it's not because he's a villain. Come mm. on, let me. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, look at this. Someone's tied some string as a 
sky. And it goes all the way down the tunnel. Wait! Hadn't we better tell Mr. Lenoir? No, oh, no. Come on, come on. Come in. The inspector's here to see you, sir. Ah. Inspector. Good of you to come. I got here as soon as I could, sir. Where now? I have to go up the rocks to the road. I don't fancy that in my bare feet. Let's try and find our way across that marshy bit. What's the matter with that dog? Timmy? Come here! Timmy! Let him go. Come on. He'll find his way home. Okay, then. Someone's been here all right. Yeah. You think it was Sergeant Uncle Quentin? In our uncle. Stupid fools. If they've gone off on their own, they'll never be found. Well, at least the dog's gone. Timmy was here. No, with any luck, they'll all end up in the marshes. It'll be your fault, you horrible man. You won't get away with it. Mr. Lemoir has sent for the police. Oh, has he? Well, they'll never find you down here. Try them. Yes, yes, all right, Sergeant, I understand. Well, do the best you can. Over and out. My men are covering the island, Mr. Lenoir, but there's a heavy mist over the marshes and visibility is very poor. Oh. This will teach Lenoir a thing or two. Be hey, hey, you hurry, little girl. Ah, You're you. mad! What? You won't get away with this! Ah. Ah. Oh, 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 oh. Keep him away from me! Keep on trying. I've got men at the causeway. No one's left the island in the past hour. We'll pick up Barling and his henchmen. Don't you worry, sir. Don't care about them, Inspector. I just want to know that Sooty and Professor Kieran are safe. Found Barling blocking another fellow. Yes. Oh, sorry, nothing, sir. No news of the professor or Sooty. How 
did you know where to find us, huh? Tell me Oh, oh, what are you doing? Mrs. Renoir says there's tea in the study if you'd like some. Might be an idea, sir. There's not much you can do out here. Oh, my sainted aunt. Lenoir, after what we've been through, you can put up with Timmy for a minute or two. Come on, George. Come on, kid. Come on, in you go. Thank you. Here we are, Quentin. Thank you very much. I'm afraid that Barling has spent much of his life living in the past. Yes, but he'll have plenty of time to get used to living in the present where he's going. What about his smuggled goods? Oh, Her Majesty's customs would look after those for him. What? I've given him a bath, Mr. Lenoir. Isn't he handsome? Timmy, meet a friend. Sit. Give your paw. Ah. <laughs> oh. I say it's not like a dog at all. <laughs> oh, he's like a real proper dog, all right. Only much more clever than most. Uh, when you want to get rid of him, we can use dogs like him on the force. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. No. But for my daughter's total inability to be separated from that animated heartthrug, I doubt if Suti and I be here to tell the tale. <laughs> well? Seeing that Timmy's such a fine fellow and so very sensible, perhaps we could bend the rules a little. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, I knew you liked him. Oh, isn't that great? Oh, he's nice. Oh, he's nice. Oh, he's nice. <laughs> Timmy, what do you think you're doing, you bad boy? I think he's at it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh